Gardner, put this part at the very beginning of the video. Uh, this video is inspired by Look Mom No Computer. I want to go ahead and say that. Um, links below to his channel. I, I've really enjoyed watching his content, and that's totally where the inspiration for this came from. I had a friend who was throwing out a bunch of these studio monitors, um, and I said, I, I want one. So I picked it up. What's up, guys? It's your boy, TV McTeverson. Yeah, this, this wasn't that hard. I mean, I mean, really, like this is an afternoon project. It, it requires a minimal amount of tools, a little bit of know-how in terms of soldering and stripping wires, but like, there's nothing about this that's really, really difficult. I do think it's cool, and if you see this video, let me know in the comments section down below. I can't figure out why. Why is my beam red on the screen? Like, my, mine's kind of that magenta color. Um, the one in Look Mom No Computer is cyan. It's that blue color. Um, is there any way to control that? I have no idea. I don't have a remote for this thing. You know what I'm saying? I can't really control what color the beam is, but I'm kind of curious as to whether or not I can change the color of it. Um, anyway, who wants to see some cool shit? What's up, YouTube? Ah! Hey, everybody. It's Garden Sound here with another fucking video about some cool stuff. There's going to be cool things in this video. Today, I'm going to be doing the most dangerous shit I've ever done. I know I made a lot of jokes in the video about taking the battery and sawing the terminal and everything in the car. Listen to me. This is actually dangerous. Don't fucking do this unless you know what you're doing. No more disclaimer. Okay, the other day I bought a studio television. Well, I didn't buy it. I picked it up from some friends, okay? And today we're gonna open this thing and we're gonna turn it into an oscilloscope. Step one, goggles. I don't know why. You know what? We need to be extra safe. We're gonna wear two pairs of goggles. Double the protection. Now the next thing I need to do is take off the fucking back of this thing. You know what, two goggles was a bad idea. Now the reason this is so dangerous is because I have to discharge the CRT or the cathode ray tube inside here. This would go a lot faster if I had it drilled it. I done it! I wanna take this off too. Don't take the safety glasses off! What are you doing? There better not be screws in the bottom. Of fucking course there's screws on the bottom. Why wouldn't there be screws on the bottom? Great job! Hey, you know what? It was free, so fuck it. This is kind of nutty. So this thing right here is where I have to discharge the cathode ray tube. So this is the cathode ray tube. I've got an X and a Y coil, and they control this little point on the screen. And I've got to discharge this thing very carefully. That's the dangerous part. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is get a really long screwdriver and two pieces of wire. Now we're gonna strip these wires. Bueno. Now we're gonna take some electrical tape. All right, that's just to insulate me from accidentally touching it or something. Um, then the next thing we're gonna do, is attach this to part of the chassis so it's grounded. I'm also going to attach this to a stick because I have the worst luck in the history of mankind. If bad things can happen, they're gonna happen to me. Okay, goggles on, two gloves on. I think I did it. These right here are the wires for the beam. So the next thing we need to do is test these for continuity and figure out which one of these are connected. Um, then what we're gonna do is wire them up to the jacks on the back. Um, hopefully I can do that. Then we'll be able to plug in some sort of a source. So if I had to guess here, just judging by the way those wires are connected up there, I'm gonna say that blue and green go together. All right, so a beep means that we've got continuity. Nope. 
interesting. So it's yellow and green. Yellow and green and blue and red. Okay, <laughs> whatever. So now what I'm gonna try to do is save some of these jacks because none of this controls power. That's all over there. This is just signal. So I think what I'm gonna do, all right guys, at the risk of fucking this up entirely, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna disconnect all these jacks because this was free, you know what I'm saying? This didn't cost me anything. So I'm gonna disconnect all of these which is a big mistake. Audio one and audio two in to these guys. Oh, and fucking, what was it? Blue and red and green and yellow, okay. So, these are patched to audio 1 and audio 2 in, which is dope, so that should work. RCA connectors are unbalanced, and they're just tip and sleeve, um, which we could make a sex joke about that, but that would not be too much of a stretch or funny. Maybe you all would like to see this closer up. Okay, I've moved the camera back a bit. Um, what I'm gonna do now is plug this in, in the other room. <laughs> so I'm just, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen. And I wanna make sure I'm being safe. So, all right, here's my extension cord. Let's plug the other end of this extension cord into this cable right here. I'm gonna plug the other end of that cable into the wall in the other room with the door shut. Here goes nothing. You know what? I'm also gonna change my lens. Cause I don't, I, <laughs> I don't wanna hurt my nice lens. Forgot how much better that Sigma is. Okay, all right, taking the nice lens, going to the other room, shitty lens. Here we go. Good luck everybody. Good luck, guys. <laughs> okay, I plugged it in. Is everybody okay? Yo, it's got a signal. All right, so that's really good news. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is unplug it and then try to plug in some audio. I have a really good friend named Matt Johnston that I owe for this amplifier for letting me use it. Thank you, Matt. If only I had a monophonic analog signal source. Ah, the Behringer D! The problem with the Model D is that there was only, there was only the ability to output left channel. There was no right channel. The way this thing works is that it requires a left and a right channel. One to drive the horizontal um, deflector coil and one to drive the vertical deflector coil. What we've got here is a couple of things. We've got an amplifier, 
All right, we've got the TV, which I reassembled just you know for safety purposes. What's going on right now is uh, I have two instances of uh, analog inside of Ableton. One's outputting a sine wave, the other's outputting a sine wave, or whatever wave I want to make analog output. Then I just apply effects and change the pitch, um, the fine pitch and the um, semitone pitch. And then I just use the um, the potentiometer inside of the amplifier. The, the reason I have this is because by itself my sound card doesn't actually put out a powerful enough signal to see the TV, right? To be able to see the the beam. So I use a um, standard just audio amplifier that I had sitting around for my buddy Matt to amplify the signal. That's what it does. Um, so I'll show you what's going on. All right, so here's how this works. You got the point in the middle of the TV, okay? Um, and I'm doing this in the dark, keep that in mind. Basically what you've got uh, are two sine waves, both on the note C. I'm gonna turn them up one at a time so you can see which one controls vertical, which one controls horizontal. There you go, there's horizontal. And here's vertical. That's about even. Now here's what happens when I detune one of these. Boom. Oh my god. I could I could play with this all day, but I just don't have time. And we just don't have time in this video. <laughs>